Hey, buddy. I almost feel like we could let this roll for like 20 minutes. It, it makes my soul feel right. It <sighs> makes my soul feel good. Wait, I'm a ginger. I don't have any of that shit. I watched this makes one of their, my innards. The black part where my heart used to be feels makes it feel good. I watched one of their videos. Well, I don't want to say these guys are like not all that well known, but I was the first viewer. So. No shit, really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. One of their standalones. This one's got like 60 views. Did yeah. you take your obligatory chance to go in the comment section and type first? Because I remember that being No, no, thing. I gave him a thumbs down, so it was the only thing. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're 0-1 yeah, right now. That would be all right. That'd be all right. That like, would oh, my God. really suck. Welcome to YouTube, bitches. <laughs> there, there will be no love here. <laughs> Witcher's Creed, though. We'll talk more about them a little later. Actually, it's not a bad fucking music release week. Yeah, I was kind of surprised. The things I thought would be great suck, and the things I thought would suck are actually pretty great. I, I have to agree with that. And some things are exactly what I thought they would be. So there, I think we're, we, everything hits kind of what we thought, except there are some that's like, I knew that's, that's what, what we found out that we know what we already knew. That certain bands can't get any better. They've already invented the wheel. They can't go any further. What band do you think I'm talking about? Yeah, I think I know. We'll get to that. That's the... That's for the music side of shit. We don't want to go and starts with a D. Blow our load right all over out of our D right here at the start of the show. <laughs> now that is what you call a segue. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Mead Metal and MMA podcast. Get together on a weekly basis and bitch and moan and complain and fucking yeah about about the general minutia of the day. Yeah, I, li- I like it. I enjoy it. How are you cunts doing? Are you asking me? Everybody out there. Oh, I was like, I'm a plural cunt? Because you, know, you know the ones listening. They want yeah. me to address them directly. Yeah, I know. How you doing? God, I'm talking about one that's listening. <laughs> you know who you are. Well, Brandon's already narrowing it down. Oh, good dang, good dang. <laughs> Certainly not Josh Licker. No, oh, no, no. Haven't heard from him in a while. I hope, uh, hope all is well in his realm. Yeah, he's uh, touched his base once in a while. That's good. He's in a line of work I used to be. Yeah. So, so, I, uh, so you I understand how tough it is to get to the YouTube's comment section during that time of your job. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, on hey, top, when, and on top of that, I mean, if you give me like a tiny piece of information, I can kind of go, oh, oh, well, I kind of have an idea of what you're involved in. Sure. Well, especially and, in that vein, man. Yeah. You know? No, I mean, if you're working like multi-service stuff, you're 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 a special person. So yeah. anyway, so thank you, Josh Licker, Indeed. for always being supportive of what we do. Fuck yeah. And corrupting the young souls of America. Listen to this very podcast. Indeed. And we're here to do it again. And we'll be back again and again. To do it again and again and again. <laughs> that was gonna be an odd infinite loop in my brain. You know, it's an odd rhythm that we have. It is. It is. We have a very it's odd like, cadence. It's like a rhythm method is what it is. Well, I think we're pretty hard to keep up with, <laughs> but I, I blame everybody else for that. I don't blame us. Fucking, I am. Ne- I absolve myself of all wrongdoings on yeah. this show. Like, you know how people can't really get British comedy sometimes? Oh, you mean the assholes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I understand that British comedy is very dry, you know, kind of a little straightforward. So sometimes people just be like, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Yeah. Like I watched Faulty Towers with someone and they just didn't think it was funny and I wasn't friends with them anymore. Well, that one, the problem with Faulty Towers, well, I guess unless you buy it directly from BBC, the fucking YouTube viewing quality is, is shit. Well, it's on uh, Netflix. Really? Yeah. All right. And it's, ve- it's a sh- I didn't realize how short it was. It's like two series. Yeah. No, no. Six episodes. Well, same thing. Uh, fucking everybody recognizes him now as Mr. Bean, but uh, dude yeah. did uh, Black Adder before that and did. Four seasons of it. Four, four series of Black Adder. Yeah. Damn. That's a good one, too. Yeah. Um, not Sean Bean. What the fuck's the dude's name? Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> Sean Bean. <laughs> you, know, you mean the guy that dies in everything he's yeah. attached to? Sorry about that. Didn't mean to go to flicking the bean this early in the podcast. So. <laughs> if we, you know, we need to get Sean Bean on here as a third, and then we could have a segment called just, Flicking the Bean. We just kill him at the end. <laughs> well, we'd have to. And after the end of every episode, we'd have to kill him. Give him a horning blow, but that's it. Ah, uh, that poor guy. He dies well in every movie he's in. He was in the second Silent Hill movie, and funny thing is, he didn't die in that. Get in a movie where everybody out, really? died but him. Well, maybe there's... Because he didn't go to Silent Hill. He was the smartest guy in the whole goddamn movie. Well, yeah, maybe there's the irony. Yeah, yeah sweet irony. dude dies in Game of Thrones. Dude dies in Lord of the Rings. Oh, by the way, spoiler alert. Dies in Goldeneye. For all you fucks that are sitting around there, whoa, whoa, I'm still kidding. I'm up to about 1997. <laughs> yeah, everybody's seen season one of Game of Thrones in here, right? 
By the way, we have a bigger audience. We have an audience. Yeah. Can we call it an audience? We can call it. It's more than one. Yeah, so it's a pair of people listening. A pair. We have a whole pair. That's right. We got the biggest pair in the world you got right here. That's right. Nothing but dangling pendulistic balls in this <laughs> meat hall right now. Uh, see, I shouldn't be encouraged because actually a bigger audience fucking encourages me to be more goddamn full of shit. Uh, well, that's usually when people enjoy our presence, you know. I don't know if anybody ever actually. I, d- really I never get complimented it. for my insight into music or MMA. I usually get complimented for my shitty days at work. Well, is that more of a sympathetic gesture? Probably, right? You know, so begs, I'll take I'll take pity. Begs the question: How's your week? Uh, you know, this week has been a week of revelation right. at my salt mine of, of a establishment. Oh, it's been like the red wedding at your job, yeah? Uh, well, not yet. It's almost like a. Uh, uh, well, I'll tell the story. It's like it's like you're being managed by George R. R. Martin over yeah, there. Yeah, like you hear them strings play in the background, and you see someone point to the dun, door. Dun, 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 you dun, make dun, your ass yeah. for the door, right? Uh, before you see all these Lannisters come in and start knifing people in the gut. Motherfuckers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we had a meeting. We had we've had two meetings in the past in a window of four days out there wow welcome to corporate america yeah no shit right at least we got paid for it um the second one was a little more dire basically our hotel apparently there is oil somewhere somewhere around here there is oil right uh, well we're part of that old fracking thing sure close en- well close enough to where they're staying at our hotel now never yeah. that's never really happened before they would have like the rig transport guys stay there for when they're doing other shit but never oil field workers stay at the hotel so that's why our rates were always under 100 bucks. Now a hotel uh, today is like a buck 60. God damn. Buck 60, son. I mean, if you're Robert Kraft trying to take a prostitute to a hotel. I was wondering when that was going to come <laughs> up. <laughs> or R. Kelly trying to. <laughs> well, that was just breaking oh, no. news today. I, no. talk, about, talk about being timely. Oh, God. So, Which actually, as they say, as they say, be Tom Brady in the streets and Robert Kraft in the sheets. Oh, man. Leave the guy alone. He's no, a, he's no, a, fuck that. No, fuck no, that. no, no. He's I'm, a celebrity. No, I'm not saying about that. I mean, he, he deserves to be sure, shredded to pieces. But, I mean, as far as, like, he's a 77-year-old billionaire. Just let him buy all the poon he wants. Yeah. I think that actually might be the motto of this show. Yeah. He's buy all the poon you want. 77-year-old billionaire. Billionaire. Let him buy all the poon he wants. I, I like billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, now our rooms are officially expensive. Officially, you are no longer the uh, site of the one night yeah. stand. And we're that two- shifts back over the, uh, the sands. Unless I, you're up for getting stabbed, in which you can go the yeah, classic. Really, that's American what I really like about it. In, yeah. Breakfast bandits are gone. Meth heads trying to sell weed out of our rooms. Those days are probably done because even online, our rooms are 160 bucks. You're wow. not going to get a deal. Um, so with that, this hotel is about to start making some serious money, and they want to make sure they have people at the helm that are gonna do it right right and uh, come to find out that we are now going to be drug testing at the super great Oof! and me i was like oh that's it i mean oh, all right of, cool instead of being like a like in a rock band that's like the hotel industry is like the last bastion of no piss tests that are convenience stores don't even i don't know really I know Stripes. Don't. I think Allsup's might have thought something was up because I had to when I worked there like fucking twenty years ago. Well, I mean, look at you, and then look at all the teenagers they hire. Nah. They're harder to read. You've you're you're tired and world weary, so they know you might be up to some shenanigans. Dude. God damn it! Um, Devin so- Townsend keeps aggravating me. This <laughs> fucking death. <laughs> Leave that Canadian God, man I'm alone. Sucker. He ain't hurt nobody. Well, I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, so yeah, the drug testing uh, red wedding is coming in like a month. Oh, so everybody has a month to clear out their shit. Okay, good. Yeah, that was but, nice here, but here's the thing. I got an email or a text. An email. God, I sound like a 90 year old. I got a text from my them, uh, emails. You got kids an email are doing. message that uh, the girl that works the nights for me is leaving March 22nd, which is the day before we start doing drug tests. Is she the crazy bitch? Uh, like the one who's doing all kinds of wacky shit staying there over the holidays? Uh, sort of. That uh, She's a friend of that person who also works there. Okay. They're, apparently they're they're like this son. Okay. Uh, well, strippers run in Paris. Yeah, you know. you know, and especially when they so reek. I've been told. They came into the the meeting reeking of weed, as one does. I I guess. I guess. I need it's some shit. take the edge off. This is a work meeting. It it, it blows me away. <laughs> and then they're like talking about like I just told that guest to shut up. I'm like, 
Uh, oh, my God. You know, that's our regional sales manager right there, right? Well, I know that they're clearly preparing to go on for their next step in life of working for the Los Alamos National Laboratory. Yeah, so. that or that Chinese <laughs> massage place down by my house. Either either or. Either or, really. <laughs> you know. So the one uh, that's operating out of a garage. <laughs> I expect there to be a bunch of holes in the... Uh, in the fucking roster out there. Or at least so. a couple of fewer holes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're firing at all cylinders here tonight. Um, outside of that, it's been all right. I mean, like, other shit sucks, but, you know, what can you do about that? Uh, you can't win them all. Where would you put them? Just rage. Move to fucking Mexico. Oh, I love rage. I should I should have. And everybody always talking about, oh, yeah, wouldn't it be great to move to Mexico? Yeah, until you live in Mexico. And fucking, apparently, this is <laughs> exactly this is apparently the stellar place to be. But yeah, without a wall, fucking, you just come go where you want. Fuck that. Just do what you want. There's no, uh, no uh, fucking any type of constraints here. Just come on down. <laughs> come on down. Whip your dick out and make it do the windmill. Like you're in Austin. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, let me take care of this right now. Uh oh. Oh wait, never mind. That those sound like something of a true captain of, of a starship. That's right. That's what that <laughs> shit is. I was gonna yeah. say if that was someone uh, asking you, "Hey, did you get that thing I sent you about four times?" Uh, part of it was. Yeah. Oh, okay, bitching, bitching. But I live in a world of joy. I oh am really? A I've never met her. A bastion of happiness. All things are fine. Did a little <laughs> yoga. Oh wait, no, fuck that. I didn't do any of that shit. I thought I you am, said diddle during yoga. I'm actually not yoga. really all that happy right now, but I can't talk about a goddamn thing. I, I, I have to keep everything under wraps. Cool. So I, I just need to think of things to piss you off. Well, I can't really go about uh, bitching about uh, my job, my day job, because uh, I could. Because that's my gig, motherfucker. It's yours. Yeah, I don't want <laughs> to step on your dick. But right, um, Get your own shit. You know, so I can't really do that, although I've got reason to. I can't. I got a relative that's fucking in some weird dire straits and i can't bring that up because it's not my fucking place to do so yeah That's um here. and outside of all of that i find that my life is just fucking just kind of disappearing in a cloud of dust here lately yeah i got Damn. well this new gig i talked about way back in like november you know yeah well it's like a straight through job i've never had one of those really you, Fuck, you've always had a little bit of a like a in the, break in the middle, right? It's in the fucking core. You know, I mean, it's 12-hour days, you know, 10, yeah. 10 hours if you're fucking, you know, in garrison and all things aren't going to shit, you know, yeah. which is rare. Uh, and then I worked for a fucking uh, ski rental place when I was living up in the mountains. And, you know, you go in really, really early and then you get like this great big ass middle of the day lunch break, which a lot of these fucks would go up and down the mountain and ski and then come back. You're like, fuck that. I'm not that guy. <laughs> you know, and then you come in in the evening and then you check everything back in. I, yeah. Yeah. It seems like a lot of um, trouble. I don't know how to ski. So, yeah, man. I, I mean, every job I've had, it's been a weird thing that would take like it did suck up. 14 hours in a day not that i was working 14 hour days i'd get a great big ass lunch break well now i'm working one that has virtually no lunch break or very little and i'm off like you know about the time some people are waking up most of my music musician friends you know? yeah i'm like hey i'm off of work They're like, hey cool you want to hang out later like yeah maybe what time like i don't know i'll be rolling out of the house like at nine well oh, fuck off. i got man. a job to do you know so i gotta be up I mean, at 4 30 goddamn yeah, I can't imagine these goddamn TV anchors because they got to be up and get all pretty up and shit like that. I show up to work in boxers, you know. That's that's where that's I'm at. All right, now. that's where I'm I, at. You know that that's I'm, I'm that's the only thing I'm missing that would really make my job yeah. ideal. Pants are pants are bullshit. Now, let me just point that out right now. Yeah, they're stupid. You fucking if you're judging people based on whether they're wearing pants or not, you know. But if you're going to go out in public and you're going to wear pants, I expect you to make an effort. Wear some goddamn denims. Wear some. Wear something. If you got the figure that works it out, uh, some yoga pants. Yeah. If you're wearing pajamas at fucking Walmart, motherfucker, reassess where you're at in life. Even those Rogan uh, pants he wears that he rolls in. Yeah, they look like uh, blue jeans, but they're uh, they're they're men's yoga pants. Yeah, yeah, that's what they are. Let's let's, let's call. Well, it if I look like Joe Rogan, I'd wear that too. I guess. I guess you don't have that fucking weird well, like chrome No, no, I'm not line. talking in the face. Line. I mean, yeah. dude's pretty. Well built, body wise, man. That guy's a stout little bastard. He's short. Yeah, I'd fuck him. I, I, I don't know. Where, <laughs> okay, well, I don't well, know well. where you're going with this, but uh, okay, I'm, I'm I'm on board. Well, after you saying that, I can't even fucking remember why I brought it up. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, but yeah, the uh, the the yeah, there, there's a company that puts out 
fucking they're leggings for men. Let's call it what it is. Nice. And so you can go out and be like, oh yeah, these for your ju- for your jujits, bro. And show uh, up my calf muscles. Go out and you like, calf, like, oh, calf cool. muscles. Fuck, like, I can't say calf muscles. Jesus Christ. I'm like that's cool. I'm out, uh, you know, rolling some jujitsu and wearing some blue jeans and looking <laughs> badass. You're not. You're not. But that's okay. That's okay. It makes it, it makes you look casual. Well, you fucking certainly are that. I think they have uh, UFC leggings on their website for like fifty bucks. If if they would come around to calling it that, that's what it is. It's leggings. Yeah. They're like, oh, oh, for ladies. Nah, they're well, tights. Now they're tights. Oh, well, I call them tights. Tights are no. Tights are different. Tights are fucking different. Am I right? Tights and leggings are different. Yes, ladies. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't want to show you up, but we do. <laughs> we do have. We do have. I, a, I never said I was a master of leggings or the knowledge that went behind them. We do have a jury. That's yes. the only reason. I brought and then a fashionable one at that. Nah. We look like a bunch of dirt people. <sighs> Fucking dirt merchants at its best. Yep. We're yeah. like a bunch of uh, the cat people in Skyrim. Uh, all right. Now, I don't They're I'm all sure dirt people. Um, the, They're all dirt people. Yeah, okay. Cool. Well, uh, all right. Cats. Cat. All right. Uh, well, it's the a, cat race in Skyrim. You know what I'm talking about. I'm waiting for you to say it. Well, I can't remember it. Or else I would have said it. <laughs> All right, so I want to say Khaleesi, but I know it's wrong. It is very wrong. Um, all right, so we're moving along. We're moving along. Yes, yes. I can't think of the word. All right. <laughs> On to the mead portion of the podcast. We're still uh, making some mead for our good friend Don for his White Shadow Are Ranch. Are we getting close to having to do some moving on? Uh, I actually need to get online, get some bottles in this week, this next week. Is he still wanting to do clear, like same as before, exactly? Uh, I'm assuming. Okay. Well, that's what he's going to get. So, you know. Okay, I didn't know if he had any like, hey, maybe do a different bottle or change a label that up. That dude he was, was happy like, with everything. He, he's like, I just want you to do the same thing you just. That's did. perfect. And I was like, okay. All right, cool. great. Well, you know what? we can do that. Yeah, um, we're going to start another one. Oh, and uh, one of our creepier uh, fans, um, <laughs> I want to name him, but he said, "Hey, so you have any of that green man on hand?" I was like, no, motherfucker. We had it on hand when you were here like eight months ago. What the fuck? What do you think? We just sit around like, well, I'm going to hold it for this guy. We don't you never do that. Know. We, we, we've done it. Well, I, we don't actually, we don't hold on to anything. If we like you and you say, hey, can you hold this for me? I got money coming in a month. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't like anybody. Very few. Yeah. Few. Yeah, there are, there, 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 there are a few souls we're okay with, but God damn it. Really? You're sitting around like, oh, hey, by the way, that bottle I was wanting to buy, like, what, in July? What the, were you high? I'm fairly certain that was turned to urine many moons ago, my friend. Uh, and it became a pork braise because fucking that's the better way to do it than ooh, waiting for your man, dumb ass to get your wallet man, out. That actually, Green Man, its cooking qualities it was right up there with its drinking qualities. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. That's a, that is an amazing, and we're getting, we're getting close. We're getting close to getting that one started. Yeah. Um, well, because that's the question. Do we go big? I mean, we got fermenters. Sure. I mean, we've clearly talked about going batch one, which for people that don't know, if you don't, if you've never had mead before, that's your baseline opportunity. Right. I mean, real mead, what we do. Yeah. That's your baseline opportunity. Or uh, we could also probably start, which would also be a parallel batch that would seemingly be the same. But because in the green man, we don't add green chili until secondary fermentation, right. which is a whole different fucking that's a whole different game right there. Yeah, we could we could probably go ahead and start two batches. Now, that's going to require us to slap some shit on the plastic in order to get 30 pounds of uh, actually 35 pounds of honey. Shit. Well, when you put it that way, that's a lot. Of we need a honey. we need a toddler size amount of honey. I don't want to put things in weird weight measurements, but there you go. I need, need a small I need a, child full of beer. I need a toddler-sized amount of honey. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be awesome. But I hate to get back into that like when we have this huge surplus, and then we have to kind of pump it back. I think we have a really good schedule going right now, you know? And if we had to push back, because I think batch one is a really important one to go back and do. I think it is. You know, to I give mean, everyone a baseline Rework of the label, about. rework uh, everything no. about it, except for the fact is what the the – matter that would remain would be the honey the yeast and the water would be the identical same as what we did the first time around and i have a secret on that which i'm not going to put out on this but Good man. um which makes that batch really pop um so th- there's that 
Now, the green man, fuck yeah. I mean, because everything's going to get covered up by the New Mexico green chili that goes into it anyway. Yeah. And that's fine. That's well, a, that, that's, that's a, what that's that batch good. is about. It's for green chili lovers. And, and not mead lovers, green chili lovers. Yeah. We could even, if we want to go fucking crazy, we could even start. We'd have to rack the uh, white shadow batch over to a carboy, which is fine because we've got plenty of those. But, and we could actually start a third batch if we wanted to in the uh, early makings of a Holly King. Because Ooh. I've got juniper berries that are pretty much ready to go right now. I love juniper berries. Jennifer Berries, yeah. Yeah, they're great. Jennifer Flowers. Oh, those are even better. That was who Clint banged, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, you lost me. Juniper Berries. <laughs> Juniper Berries, yeah. So, right. um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, and Holly King is, is Juniper Berries and Peppermint. That's what that is, you know. If we started one of those here pretty quick, uh, we could probably have that ready by the holiday season. Yeah, like if they had some kind of solstice celebration in Skyrim, that's probably what they'd be drinking. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Oh, God, it sounds good. We have that one bottle still, right? Our Grand Reserve. Yeah, yeah. I suppose so. Until I, like, I don't know, like dabble in heroin and drink it all in one night and, you know. So you believe in Santa then? <laughs> the real Santa. <laughs> the the one that is not very forgiving. Which absolutely, as we know, I will not do that. So, Would you, uh, would you hand me that do, homie? The, is uh, it just squeeze it my way? This, this bottle right here? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the fat Tullamore bastard. Thank <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyway, but yeah, the mead side of things, things are good. We have a wide open territory of things we can do if we want to really, really put ourselves in debt based on the knowledge that our stuff will eventually sell. Oh, yeah. Uh, Krista had her first taste of our mead a couple weeks ago yeah. and quite enjoyed. I haven't heard anybody say it sucked ass yet. Unless everybody's lying to us. You're not lying, are you? Okay, cool. I will come across this table. Oh, God. Oh, I will um, cut you <laughs> with a knife. Cut you, bitch. I will cut you. All right, but, uh, the, uh, but yeah, still, the, uh, what we have going on on the mead front, we have the potential to do about three, start three new batches, which is only close to about 50 pounds of honey. That's easy, right? <laughs> oh, my God. I need an apiary. <laughs> We like one about the size of a freshman in high school size. Here's what batch. we do. We get an old shitty trailer house infested with honeybees and just let them make it their own. Okay. Or or we find some of the poorer people in this county that already have that going on. Oh, right. I don't want to help these cunts out. Well, they'd be helping us. They've out. never helped us. They've it's never helped us do like, anything. It's like Dutch rudder action. Dutch rudder. <laughs> you could say Dutch rudder after anything... And it would make sense for some reason. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I finished my test. You know, you like that one we did on the Dutch Rudder? What? Oh. Oh. Filthy. Well, it's only just by vernacular. Yeah. Well, the it Dutch, just sounds the, disgusting. The Dutch Rudder is basically where you're grabbing your own dick and somebody else is moving your arm, right? That's the uh, Dutch Rudder. I think you're right. I'm not, I, I, I'm not familiar. Let's get on Urban no. Dictionary and check it out. We're going to have to make a new segment for Mead, Metal, Masturbation, and MMA podcast. <laughs> It'll be the M M M M. Today we're going to talk about the Dutch rudder. I tried it for a half an hour. <laughs> Couldn't get the damn thing to work. Trying to get the homeless people to help me out is a fucking whole Went different Went down to consideration. Walmart, and they just wanted money for gas. I said, well, if you give me a hand job, you'll have your money for gas. I think at that point you call it the Walmarts, right? I think so. Yeah. If you're going down to Walmart for hand jobs from homeless people, yeah, you call it the Walmarts. Yeah, it just makes you a citizen. <laughs> All right, on to the metal side of the podcast, correct? Uh, and it has been not bad. I rather enjoyed all the music. Well, we've had we've had a shitty couple of weeks, though. I think, yeah. yeah. I mean, this good evening is tempered by some really terrible ones before. Yeah, the, the sore's been the uh, the shining beacon so far, I think. Which is weird. It's made me get into fucking folk metal again. That, well, that just that's that shows you just how good it really was. It makes you enjoy the other shit again, even if it's just for a little while. Which, let me ask you this. You and, and you, the listener. Is there something you grab onto and you're like, this is this is the shit. This is what I appreciate. This is what I love now. And I'll probably love this probably all my life or at least acknowledge that it's really good. Only to find a shit maybe about a decade later. It's like, God damn it. I don't, I don't even know if I even dig this anymore. Most of the music I listened to in high school. That's where I'm kind of at, though, with folk metal. Or was. Or was. Yeah. Before Sarah came around. Well, and they didn't come around. They've been around that latest release of theirs. 
Yeah, Forgotten uh, Paths. Man, I got to tell you, because, I, I mean, we've talked about, um, you know, Winter Sun a lot. I don't really want to talk. Uh, not, and not in a po- Well, it used to be in a positive vibe, to, man. I don't really want to really give those fucks any time on our show. Still our um, most listened to podcast. I'd, ra- I'd rather talk about eating like cockroaches or something like that than those assholes. But or cock, yeah, or cock, yeah. But the uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that folk metal for me was I was done. I was kind of done. I could tell. I the mean, only Moon, time we listened Moon's, to it, Moon Sorrow, fine. But could you really say that they are fucking folk metal? They they're not really. And they'd be the first to tell you they are. They identify as a black metal band. Yep. Yeah. You know. I don't know, but I mean, but. In Sephirum, Tear, all these formulaic fucking bands that just drive me crazy. Yeah. And I, I appreciate what they're trying to do because that's something that we thought about doing once upon a time. It's like, it's easy. See, what you do is you find a good progression, you plug that in with fucking traditional instruments, and then you fucking move it over to, um, you know, kind of just a barrage of fucking electronic music and shit like that. You know, some heavier shit. Right. Nice ambient music, you know. <sighs> Good little but breakdowns. The problem really became actually the problem is one of the things I thought we had a really good asset in, and that is that we could fucking plug in a lot of synth stuff. Yeah, with that fucking keyboard you won. <sighs> God damn it. It, it! Everything started sounding the same at a certain point, and I would say like only this like three four years ago, it started sounding the same. Yeah, and I couldn't do it. And then that's kind of actually when we started kind of evolving into the uh, Paul Bearer side of things. Well, Paul Bearer came out and showed well, they, that there was... I mean, a, they came out in like 2011, but I mean, we got on yeah. board like I got on board on Foundations of Burden. Right. That's when we kind yeah. of picked it up. Uh, it showed that you it can be done differently and better. Because they were kind of operating on a doom standpoint, which kind of then opened a lot of other doors. Which the bass player will will be first tell you that they don't con- he doesn't consider him a doom metal band but dude that's that's what you are if your influences really are primarily black sabbath you know Heart- I mean? heartless makes the, is the farthest from doom they've done yet yeah but yeah they saw an extinction foundations of burden those are two doom metal albums that dick bag trying to say that they're a prog band it's like no no you're not, not yet if that's what you're striving for not yet not yet but i hope i hope they're not going down the opeth route dude that would suck that would suck so bad. Yeah, but, you know, but, man, ah, you're putting me in a position of having to defend Opeth. Uh-oh. Sorry. I mean, when, My you, bad. when you do everything you think that you probably had set out to do, and you feel like, like fucking George W. Bush on an aircraft carrier, mission accomplished, we did it, boys. What are we going to do next? You know? Wearing I mean, the jacket and shit. If you get to that point, then maybe maybe the next step is to do something that's challenging. Sure. But that that's really... what life is about. It's fucking making yourself challenge, you yeah. know, finding challenges for yourself that you can accomplish. But you're not you run the risk of not of losing fans that are hardcore or not or not gaining new ones. There are some bands that have been doing that and singular entities. Kind of some that I was talking about earlier. Um it's I don't know. I just feel like Paul Bear got it right. Paul Bear has gotten it right. Heartless kind of deviated a little bit from that Foundations of Burden formula, but kept true enough to it that it's an amazing album. Their evolution, though, has made sense. Right. Opeth had a fucking cliff they fell off of. Yeah, and they, but the, everybody loved them for what they were doing. And even when they started to add a little bit of that prog aspect to it, people were still huge fans. But when they are like, you know what, we're just going to go full-on 70s psychedelic on your ass... You lost me. I would like to know what the numbers are, though. I'd be willing to bet those sons of bitches are making more now than they did five years ago. Oh, fuck yeah, man, because they're more accessible. They're way more Absolutely. accessible. I mean, and you could call it, you know, hey, they're sold out. Yeah, you well, could... I, I'm, I hate it when fucking people say that. I hate it, too. Like, because, your ass wouldn't because, do that to make more money. Fucking come on. Be, well, because it's always unequivocal and and un, uneducated. Yeah. <laughs> Every goddamn time, yeah. Every time. Um, you know, so, I mean, more power to Opeth. I mean, that's cool, because I know I can still go back and listen to their old shit, and that's fine. And we can sit back and hope that Paul Bearer keeps things on a fucking pretty heavy edge. They're about due for another one. Yeah. I, I didn't realize. I, I, I keep feeling like that Heartless wasn't that long yeah, ago. Yeah, it came out Fuck last year. That. No, it, that's been out for a while. Yeah, it's been, uh, we're coming up on, what, the three-year point? Yeah. I Jeez. think uh, 
October? Actually, I think next month, right? Next month will be. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's it's time. I think they're working on new shit. I mean, they're not touring. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully they're working on that follow-up. Can't, and that'd be one I'm excited for. Yeah. One I'm less excited for, and that's one that's a new release today. And I don't... My problem is that I'm not a fan, so I feel like an asshole if I sit around and criticize it. But Devin Townsend made a big to-do about the release today. Yeah. One part of my mind, the weird, like, little artistic side that wants to sit around with a fucking paintbrush, digs what he did. But that's a fucking minor part of my brain. Well, the Devin Townsend is, is, like, hardcore ethereal artsy, you know? Yeah, but man, this only latest instead of thing like is, using DMT stuff, it's like cats and dinosaurs and shit. Yeah, well, you know his his newest release to drop today. Yeah, Genesis uh, coming off of Empath that's out in March, I want to say. So if you want to check out Devin Towns and listen to his own music, <laughs> I I kind of like that video. It, it, it's it's a simple ass video Th- that required no budget except for whoever made the background. That was it. The only problem I have is that the rewatchability is zero. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why you just find one that has the album artwork on it and rock that. If you're a fan of the song. And that's a big if. It's I I, I, I want to say I'm not saying I hate it. I'm no, all, I don't. I, man, I don't I don't want to say I hate anything I, outside of a couple of acts. Yeah, I knew they as are, far but. as as far as I go, as of right now, I don't get it yet. I don't I can't wrap my brain around. Careful, you don't want well, that after, going up your nose. Uh, no, uh, I, I put a little uh, tool of more dew down the lungs. That's what oh. that was. Well, um, at least, yeah, that won't cause a bloody nose. No, no, just bloody lungs. We're good. The um, <laughs> I would say, though, the problem is is that it's it's artful as hell. I mean, the, oh, totally. It, it, it is, but to the point to where it almost excludes me, and I'm a fucking fan of a lot of shit. Yeah, you know? well, really, me too, and I'm a know? fan of Devin Townsend, and I feel like I don't get it yet. Yeah. Like, I need to hear the entire album. So I, on one hand, I feel like, okay, are you trying to make me feel like a dummy? Or on the other hand, are you trying to make me feel, you know, like... Like, like an asshole. Like I'm overlooking it so much to the point where I'm right and you're wrong. Yeah. There's a weird divergence that's in that, but that's... Devin Townsend. It's so, like seven you know. songs in one. Uh, the the che, uh, che I was about to say Che Guevara. Che Guevara. Yeah. Uh, the, I, the I can't remember her name. Uh, leader there, the you know. female vocalist that did Casualties of Cool with him sings on that album on the more mellow parts. Sounds fucking lovely. But the problem is it, it's sec- six or seven songs crushed into one. And you can hear when one ends and another one starts. So that makes me wonder then, is this actually a sampler of everything else that's going to no, be on this this is record? a legit track. That's a track, okay. It's a track off. Because, because we know Lucid Planet released a deal that was a sampler. Yeah, right? it was like five minutes from each of the tracks that were going to be on their upcoming album. Yeah, which, by the way, that's still pretty badass. But um, I haven't listened to well, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Devin, get, yeah, it's cool. I, yeah, look, I don't hate I, it. I don't love it. I just don't get it yet. I want to quote. I want to quote Pinky from Next Friday, and like <laughs> son of a bitch, like, like, come on, baby, you know I love you, right? But you're gonna have to slow this motherfucker down. Man, shut up! <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's the mindset that I have with almost anything that Devin Townsend does. Am I too stupid to listen to his music? Maybe, or am but I then, too fucking smart? Then, I don't know which. After one. we listen to Genesis. Deadhead comes on a live version from uh, the Royal Albert Hall, and it's like, oh, oh, I get this. I know what this is. I know what this is about. I know what he's doing. Yeah. And it's not up to us to fucking get behind what he's doing. Really, at the end of the day, it's just, is the music good or not? I can't say if it is or not yet. Because I don't, I can't wrap my brain around it. It's too much. Ruben Gonzalez could listen to that song and give us a serious review because. This motherfucker will watch four TVs at once with different shit going on. Yeah. So he might be one to actually be able to dissect it. Too bad we couldn't get his ass down here. Yeah, well. Maybe next week. And I didn't throw together anything for a Friday. Maybe. Oh, that's that. Okay, so Maybe it's, next it's your fault. Maybe next week. Maybe we'll get Ruben <laughs> on next week and we'll get his fucking take on it. It'll uh, be all right. The band that I was actually talking about earlier was Dream Theater. I fully expected that album to be nothing more than a diaper load of human shit. Damn, that's kind of harsh for Dream Theater. Maybe. I'm, I'm, I've never been a fan. 
Well, okay. And I'm and this and this current record's not going to make me a fan. But it should. God it damn should. it, it's all right. It, it's it's good. But here's the problem: Dream Theater, Dream Theater can't. There, there's no more they can do. They've already blown folks like me, folk like her away. It's th- there's no more, nothing more than they can do. So every album that's come out, like last album, The Astonishing, was not really that good. Okay. I thought maybe it was because the Mike Mangini edition still hadn't really caught traction yet, but that ain't it. They put this one out, and I do like it, but I just think Dream Theater's not. They've already put out their best work. You know, I don't think their best work is yet to come. Their b- best work's already behind them. Sure. Yeah, I don't think they're about to put out the next Black album. If I were to throw you an either or, I was going to do a longer list than this one, but I mean, but this is just a, a one off. All right. Either or of. Uh, Fear Factor and uh, or Dream Theater. Which one do you believe is probably more relevant to the shit you're into right now? Uh, Dream Theater. Yeah, okay. Fear Factory is more relevant when I'm listening to late 90s, early 2000s metal, you okay. know? Uh, and especially if I just want music that has a beat and a riff and, it's, and speed and it all comes together. Dream Theater, that, that speaks more to me. That okay. Dream Theater branches out into more music that I love, rather than Fear Factory branches out into the same shit. Right. It's just like Fear Factory, but a little different. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I was I was kind of thinking about that. I thought, that might actually be a tough question for Brandon, but not really. But I mean, but you did give fucking certainly some thought to it. But yeah. yeah, well, I mean, I, I do enjoy both bands, but Dream Theater does more for me and leads me to better music than Fear Factory does. Fear Factory led me to Breweria, which is like a Mexican heavy metal band that just talks about cutting the heads off of white people. Right. White well, politicians, primarily. As long as they're all wearing, like, you know, uh, uh, mascara masks right. and shit like that. Uh, you know? Yeah, they're all, no, they're all just wearing <laughs> fucking bandanas and shit. Oh, okay. So it's, it's like, like suicidal tendencies then. Yeah, like suicidal <laughs> tendencies, only they're actual, like, legit murders. Uh, the, right, there's only right. one album I'd like to talk about just really quick. Okay. Uh, Les Claypool and Sean Lennon put out an album today that I heard on the radio and it is so much goddamn fun. It's not rocking. It really doesn't belong on the show. I don't think because it doesn't really sound like rock and roll to me, but it is just so much fun. Sean Lennon sounds just like John, just like John dead ringer and the Les Claypool baseline really adds. It, it's such a weird amalgamation of shit. There's a song called movement one, the saga of Jack Parsons. And it basically sounds like it almost sounds like a Beatles deep cut if the Beatles had irked their way into like the mid seventies, you know. It well, is Sean, by Sean Lennon. He's the one where uh, John Lennon uh, banged what's her name, Yoko. The, uh, the oh, spring of John and Yoko. Yeah. Speaking of which, how are things going in North Korea with her? Because um, you know, <laughs> she's th- the leader of North Korea. Yeah, right? aren't they like meeting in Saigon or something with our little ginger comb over president? She looks just like Kim Jong Un. Yeah. And if you're a lady, that's a prop. If she had like that weird North Korean high and tight that they rock over yeah. there, you know, it'd be perfect. <laughs> Just saying. I'm not I'm not picking shit with anybody. But uh, uh not by that no, statement. We don't, we don't by this fight. statement. We I don't mean, pick fights here at the Mead Metal MMA podcast. I'm assuming she's a bad driver. That's just me. <laughs> um well, okay, Candlemass has one out today. Which is weird to me because I really didn't like their last record. This fucking current one, this is quite listenable. Well, that song that has Tony Iommi on it is pretty goddamn good. As- Astralis? As it should be, though. Yeah. Well, I of mean, course. yeah, a- Astralis is the, uh, uh, is that it? Uh, a- as- Asto- Asterolis. Asterolis. Asterolis, the great octopus. What the fuck is with all these bands wanting to incorporate oct- octopi into their music? <laughs> First o- APC did it, and now Candlemass is doing it? Yeah, it's from, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. That's, Come on, man. Uh, you can't put out an album called The Door to Doom and not be a great doom metal album. Yeah, deny it all day. We're not a doom band. Where'd you get that shit? You people just make it up. It's just fake news. And out of Sweden, which uh, is it's their day. news to you. Today is their day. Yeah, Sweden is the day the day for uh, decent, and maybe, the, well, Delane put out a new album today. Haven't listened to it yet. But it looks like one of those mezzo-soprano bands. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So 
Could be good, but these nuts. Um, the uh, let's see, uh, Witcher's Creed, which we let off with on the show, that's worth a fucking listen. I'm just saying. Uh, Awakened from the Tomb is the name of the full album that got uh, released today. Another band from Sweden. Oops, I accidentally Oops. hit a YouTube video to play music. But thankfully, it's very quiet. Yeah. Uh, so we're and- gonna have like a bunch of weird shit like underneath the uh, sounder. No, oh, no, no, it's fine. Oh, okay, I paused it. Uh. Overkill, band's been around for for almost forty years. Put out another album today, yeah. and it's just as good as every album they put out over the past twenty years. See, I'm not going to talk shit because they're, they're consistently thrashy good. Another Overkill album is just like you know what you're getting. You know what you're getting. It's the same thing as my fr- fucking friend Dave and uh, Monster Magnet. That fucking it's always they're always going to put an album out every two three years. Yeah. Every count it till he dies. And they're going to be groovy. And Overkill is the same fucking yeah. way. Oh, you, you know, you can put your watch on it. That Overkill will put out an album every two years. We good with uh, Metal Side? I think so. There's, I mean, there's like riff raff in the realm, but yeah, that can go fucking stuff. I only like talking about the music. Yeah. You got anything on the um, on the news side of things? I guess, uh, the, I guess uh, Davy Jones died, right? <laughs> no, he was already dead. That guy, that guy, oh, Peter they, Torque. They was killed the him again. That, they killed him again. They, they dug him up, killed him again, Jason Voorhees <laughs> style, and then buried him. <laughs> now, Peter Torque died a couple of days ago, yeah. 77 years old. I, that bummed me out because. That's a good run. That's a musician that lived to the age of 77. What the well, fuck? I'm are not people? bummed at the death. It's just like when you. Because I haven't thought of the fucking monkeys in years. So when I see that he died, I'm like, oh, oh, because it just brings back the all the memories of when right. I was little. Right. That's why it sucks. Not because he's passed away. That dude had like a rare mouth cancer. They had to split his mouth open like a goddamn predator to work on it. Oy. Yeah, like some gnarly shit. He didn't, so own fa- a, he didn't own a handgun or a, <coughs> or a belt to throw or a shower curtain rod. I mean, no, he wouldn't have carried it. Just him. saying, just saying. But uh, but hey, seventy seven with yeah. a lethal rare mouth cancer, Thailand with a length of rope, and tell me what the carotene special. Uh, uh, That's so all I'm bad. saying. So bad. Uh, so I think all we're left with now is Peter Nesbeth and uh, the other one, <laughs> Mickey Dolenz. Mickey Dolenz. That's the other one, uh, which is not metal or MMA. But <laughs> let me uh, I, see the the you, you derailed me with the monkeys thing. I'm just gonna go over some uh, headlines here. Okay. I'm not gonna right. get in depth on it. Yeah. All right. Do you need Do you need my input? Because I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll go, save a few for I'm you. I'm gonna go go let loose of some Tullamore. Good. I'll ask I'll ask this lady over here. So you like rap? Do you? <laughs> I love rap. <laughs> Good. We're gonna change the name of this podcast. Uh, no, so we got some tours that are coming up. Uh, Ruben Gonzalez let me know about a Breaking Benjamin North American tour. I think it's cool because Chevelle's on it. I really like Chevelle. Not a fan of Breaking Benjamin or Three Days of Grace, but it's 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 the wet dream for anybody that listened to alternative rock between 1999 and 2004. And if you're a fan of Five Finger Death Punch and in this moment, they're also going to be hanging out for about a month. They're uh, Strangely enough, they're not hitting Lubbock, Texas, because these are two bands that love them some Lubbock, Texas. And one is not that good, and the other is decent. And I will let you folks guess which is which, because I don't want to get people mad at me. Oof. Kevin will like this one. I weekly bowl beat update, did I? Uh, thankfully, there isn't one. I was just letting everybody know that uh, Five Finger Death Punch in this moment are not. They're going to be touring in July, but they're not playing Lubbock. Okay. Sorry, bitches. Uh, uh, that's. Yeah. Man, Lubbock, I, I don't want to talk some shit about that city because it's fine. They're only 90 minutes. I only talk shit about their music. That's all I talk about. The once, bands I get there. Once upon a time, they, that town, you could find. If you were a fan of music, you could find your shit. You could find your groove. Sure. God. Damn it, good luck Late nowadays. 90s, first five years of the 2000s, it was a nice place to go for a real intimate experience with like rock and metal bands. Because Jake's Back Room or uh, Liquid 2000, it was called back yeah. in the early, yeah, late 90s. Yeah, Palladian before that. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, or the amphitheater they got there outside of town. There were options for great shit. And, and the Texas Cafe, i.e. The Spoon, has always been, and it still is, you know, kind of a good breeding ground for some shit. But Is that where Sturgill played? No, no, that was at the. Uh, that was a weird goddamn deal. It was at the uh, the Civic Center. Oh, before they sh- fucking shut it down. 
Because they had one over there that they shut down because yeah, they were fucking no, no, it, it, one. that's that's a different one. There was one on campus. It was some other fucking sporting venue. This no, this is the uh, the the city of Lubbock owns owns this. This is the uh, Lubbock Memorial Civic Center. I think. Oh, okay. And stayed at a uh, at a hotel on some cheap rates, thanks to a certain friend of mine, <clears throat> and uh, <sighs> who was able to walk straight out my table. door. <laughs> Able to walk straight out my door and straight over. I mean, there was no. Driving. I had no idea just how like conveniently located. Yeah, yeah. that hotel I didn't get for you. Put us on the back side of the fuck. But like, oh, motherfuckers, really? Oh, oh, you know what? I think that's where we're. I think that's where the venue Isn't is. Isn't that where the concert? <laughs> Holy shit! And then suddenly, it's like, goddamn! I started want to invite people back to the room, yeah, and hang well, out, and have a good time. Hey, well, it's easier. I am to please, man. Uh, Doyle, Doyle von Frankenstein. You know this motherfucker. The beefy guy from the Misfits. Oh, okay, right. The one that clearly on the HGH. Yeah, yeah. That's well, why he's got to have that weird shitty cone in front of his head. Well, and that's the whole thing. And the the fucking T-shirts they have is basically a direct imprint of him, and it's supposed to be on the play on the uh, the whole fucking uh, the the mantle of Jesus or something like that. And that's yeah. what they want to do, you know, for a Misfits T-shirt. Yeah, like man. come on, man. Well, apparently, <laughs> not that he had a complex or anything, but apparently this guy is bummed out. Uh, Apparently, a lot of people are stealing Misfit songs these days. So uh, he's forced, his words, forced to do $50 meet and greets uh, with people he doesn't want to be around because scumbags steal his music. On Did them. he say that exactly? Yeah. yeah. I can. All uh, right, I'll well, pl- we'll close out with this because this is really a hell of a quote from a guy who's a real asshole. And we're not talking about Gene Simmons. No, we're talking. Who, by the way, is the gold member of biggest assholes of this portion of the podcast. But, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, when talk when he's talking about, it, he says uh, the thing that sucks the most about it is that everybody steals music. You spend thousands and thousands of dollars to make a record, and all these scumbags are just stealing it. And then they want more. And then you're a dick because you're doing a meet and greet for fifty fucking bucks and make up for it, which you don't want to do. You think I want to meet all these fucking people? I don't. When I'm done, I just want to take a shower and go to bed. I just worked. And he's asked questions yeah you can kiss my ass you want to steal this shit if i was making motorcycles and they came and took one would that be a crime why can't we punish people for stealing songs there should be a ten thousand dollar fine for that go fuck yourself so uh what do you say we wrap up this podcast here in about 10 15 minutes and uh go ahead and learn some misfits tunes and rip them off that's Ugh. the uh you know that's my temptation i think i'd rather shove a razor blade in my urethra yeah that'd be a very I, it's, it's, misfit thing to do right it's just the normal thing of somebody's going don't do that well, goddamn! I didn't think about it until you told me not to. Yeah, fuck it. It's like Old George Carlin talking about anal. I, I I hate musicians like that. I really do. Because clearly, it is all about this. It's it is clearly all, it's always about, about scratch. That. It's always about. It, scratch. But it is. It's about that with everybody. But clearly, with the misfits, that's what it's all about. Well, let me put it this way: I don't know if the entire band is full of assholes like uh, Kiss, but. There's certainly a head asshole involved, and it's a lot like Kiss in that regard. Yeah, Somebody just needs to let him know, hey, man, get a vault. Get a vault. And then sell that vault for 2000 bucks to each idiot that's wanting to buy your bullshit. Oh, except for the fact that nobody fucking really likes him, Misfits. Yeah. So. Hell, shit, man. I'd, I would have rather spent $500 on that Moonsar box set. Fuck yes. Yeah, dude. Dude, if you're talking about spending hundreds of dollars somewhere, fuck Kiss, fuck the Misfits. Moonsar is where your money should Moonsar box set, yeah. Oh, man, that's one I still regret. That and that Paul Bear concert now. Because I they, should have been selling blood and semen all week Didn't long, think about it. Damn. I mean, no, hindsight, no, no, man, no, it's no. like, God damn. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk about some Chingasso's way. <sighs> all right. Remember, we have remember such guys, a great card coming up. Do you remember up? when we used to bring up MMA and our voices lit up and we're like we were stoked? Do you remember when I talked about how I used to have this real big love affair with folk metal, and now it's kind of starting to kind wane on, a little? Yeah, on the yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I, I, I'm not. No, I, I do want to say last week's card. It sucked the fact they put it on a Sunday. I can't blame fighters for that. I can blame the promotion. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah. But god damn it, that fight. There, there was like, with the exception of like two fucking people, it was nothing but UFC vets. That's all right. That's that's okay. Sure. I mean, it may not have been the star power you're looking for, but goddamn, Paul Felder fighting James Vick, that Blew was a, a f- goddamn long. That was your fight of the night, wasn't it? Um, no, no, no. It was uh, goddamn it. I didn't expect you to throw that. Ah, fuck it. Um, no, no. It was, it was goddamn it. Is that other? 
it's going to bug me now. Oh, fuck that. I'm just going to blow it off. No, no, that wasn't. <laughs> No, no. The uh, but the performance and I was uh, from um, you know Hicks and Gracie's kid. Oh, Cron, yeah. Cron, Cron. Sorry, Cron. Who looks Gracie. like a fucking Cron Brazilian Gracie. Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, exactly. But uh, but it was a great fucking fight night, dude. I mean, there yeah. there weren't like top notch stars, and there didn't need to be. But uh, my only complaint was the uh, promotion. They're a bunch of fucks because they keep putting them on They're like oh everybody's got president's day let's throw on a fr- uh, sunday night fight card yeah because you can get the fucking venue for half price you bunch of cunts oh man my beard got in the way of my shit yeah sorry if y'all heard my beard beard game strong thank you sir um the card was good it was on a sunday we tried our best fucking stay up and watch it uh the only th- really thing worth talking about is kane velasquez getting uppercutted to the point where he blew his knee up. Well, he says it was a freak accident that happened because his knee kind of gave up on him. And, uh, you know, so it had nothing to do with that short uppercut from uh, Francis Nagano. There's put fucking people down for yeah. his, for for a fucking See, better Alistair part of career. over him. See, it, it, over oh him got the full fucking the uppercut. Worst, yeah. The worst uppercut I've seen anybody take. It was a UFC 3 video game. I wasn't even uppercut. worried about his brain. I was worried about his neck and his spine. Worried about his soul. Ugh. But, uh, yeah, that less than 30 seconds. That fight was over. Yeah, what, 20, 20, 20, 20, 26, 26. 26 seconds. Kane shot for a takedown. It looked really sloppy. I mean, yeah. it didn't have any power behind it. When that dude, if he shot to take you down, you were going down. Francis caught him with a short uppercut. And and Kane can wave it off all he wants. Oh, my knee just gave way. Your knee gave way after that short uppercut came in, and that made your knee give way. Just like Crow Cop's ankle gave way after Gabriel Gonzaga kicked him in the fucking head. Yeah. It, it's the same thing. Chingasso's way, and that's not what, yeah. uh, the way that it's going to go. It's not the way, way. Motherfucks. All right, anyway. <laughs> See, I think we're learned folk here. Yeah. Uh, There's a card in uh, fucking Siberia tomorrow. Prague. Or- Prague, okay. Prague, Prague. I think that's Prague, Wisconsin. In Prague, Prague, Czechoslovakia. I, I think uh, you know. Uh, normally, I, 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 that fucking car just doesn't interest me at all. I, I don't even have it pulled up. I, uh, I'm a fan of MMA. Me too. You're God not gonna it. get. You're not gonna ch- get my ass crawling out of bed at six in a goddamn morning to watch a fight. I'm just yeah. saying. I mean, shit. Those fight. The fight card's over at three. I'm, and I'm, and for you and I, we like to have a good time. We're watching fight cards. Even if those fight cards are over at eight, we're drunk like it's midnight. Fuck yes. So well, we cut because we're fans. We we're can't fans be. We sport. can't be that drunk at three in the afternoon. No. Fuck no. They cart us off or fucking. We probably we probably be dead. Go and talk to people. Yeah. No. <laughs> the kind words will be said at our funerals, and as soon as we were committed to the dust, people would just forget about us. Pull me off that pyre. I'm still good, coach. That's right. <laughs> so, what are the uh, what, what's the headline here in the co-ed? I mean, those are like really the only things we usually give uh, two fucks let's about. See here. Uh, Jan Blokovich fighting uh, Tiago Santos. Don't care. That's your main event. Oh my god, <laughs> this shit's gonna be horrible. It's gonna be horrible. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to open with the main event. But oh my god, this that's sounds, your five. That's your five round main this event. This sounds like some nonsense. Uh, Co main events: uh, Marcos Roger, Rogerio de Lima fighting Stefan Struve. Stefan Struve making another appearance in a foreign land again, only probably to get knocked the fuck out again. He's the dude's like almost seven foot tall, right? He, yeah, dude. The the height discrepancy between these two guys is ridiculous. I think it's a solid foot, but it doesn't matter. Mark Hunt fucking broke his jaw oh fuck yeah so no, that, no. that dude can touch you can be touched big or small height means a lot of things in a lot of fights but not where Stefan struve is concerned uh let me let's see D- uh daniel tamer on the card don't care yeah uh michael prezeris on the card Uh-oh. oh i'm losing him i'm losing him john dodson's on the card hey there we go the biggest fight of the night that's uh well liz carmouche is also on the card so let's not get hasty i like her carmouche uh Sorry. john dodson versus <laughs> Peter Yan. Can't believe you just said that about Liz Carmouche. <laughs> uh, Dodson is always the guy that's fighting for the belt, but never won the belt. He's always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Yeah. I got Dodson in a pretty lopsided. I got him on his next 15 fight minute. by, uh, you know, decision or something. Yeah. Not, uh, not, th- not this one. Liz Carmouche fighting the only Czech fighter on the card. Uh, Lucy Pulova. We've seen her fight. Check We've seen her fight out. recently. Actually, um, which, well, you won't, we won't 
be watching this card, so you won't see her. No. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll watch the highlights. Uh, when you see her face, you'll remember. I can't remember the last gal she fought, but she looked really good. Uh, Gian Vellante fighting Mikkel oh. Oleksijiguk. I'm good with uh, Vellante, yeah. Yeah. But you would think, oh, that's the Italian guy? No, no, he's from fucking Long Island. So. And your main event, Jan Blakovich fighting Tiago Santos. Who you got and why, motherfucker? I got me drinking and uh, making a lot of dumb mistakes. That's what I got. So awesome. What you got? Uh, I got, I think this is a light heavyweight fight. I think John Jones is going to run in. Uh, in the second <laughs> round, and give a stone cold stunner to Tiago Santos. Give Jan the middle finger, and say, "I'll see you at WrestleMania, bitch." Is it weird that I uh, almost? I was like, "Wow, that seems weird." But no, no, stunner is different from a shocker. Uh, yeah, stunner is a pro wrestling move, and a shocker is a uh, m- multiple fingers and orifices below the waist. <laughs> Very different. All right. Now, after saying that, uh, I would like to point out that today is a moderately important day in my life. Today is the 77th birthday of my grandfather, Mr. Bob Hobbs. Uh, the most influential fucking person in your life, I would say. I, I would agree 100% with that. Uh, that Your house even shows... Everywhere I go, it, I, I see... Because like I, he would give shit away just like I do. Yeah. You know? So it's nice everywhere I go that I spend time. There's a little bit of his work there. So it's like I'm never really away. But happy 77th birthday. I'm sure if he had still been around for Paul Bear's Heartless, he would have been a big fan. Yeah, that's no, the, only, the only weird thing is. is Dude like you be 40. But he the, only, the only thing that's weird is because the amount of shit that he probably would have really, really enjoyed came out like right after he passed away right. i mean sturgill said he would stuff. like sturgill yeah man he would really dig he would have dug sturgill uh, so it's kind of a weirdly god it's uh, it's uh it, it, it's rough but oh yeah. but but hey it's a celebration bitches yeah so happy 77th to my pops and uh i do believe oh good man good man he remembered even though i told him not to <laughs> well we're gonna make picks though we're gonna make picks we do. I, I, I had a because he's a fan of Elvis, right? Oh, yeah. So, that, well, he uh, was Elvis. Right. I think he was, uh, <laughs> like, a, one of the multiple Elvises we've seen on the earth. All right, dude. Well, let's make some picks uh, on to the, uh, the drinking side of, uh, of life. I think this Tullamore do will not see the light of day. I think uh, it's more like a Tullamore don't until Tullamore uh, don't. You know, it'll let me know otherwise. Tullamore I'm gonna. <laughs> All right, on to the uh, listening side of things. Obviously, Elvis Presley never been to Spain's the big one for you today. But on my metal side, though, which isn't even really metal, I'm sticking with that fucking McCar- uh, not McCartney, uh, Claypool <laughs> Lennon uh, Delirium. That is okay. such a fun fucking album. Give it yeah. a listen. Daryl, I'm talking to you. Yeah, yeah. Get get off your ass and like get outside your comfort zone. So, <laughs> yeah, there you all go. right. Uh, and then Witcher's Creed, uh, Witcher's Creed, where we'd started at. Um, I mean, that's probably where I'm going to be today. I think that's the uh, that's the right move right there. That's that's the power move for me. But. MMA. We're not doing. We're not going to do fight picks, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Greatest welterweight fighter that ever lived. Uh, that'd be George Saint Pierre. I can't argue with that, but I'd say Robbie Lawler has an argument. That fucking dude came back for round two of his career and made it better than the first round. Yeah, maybe. GSP tried to do it, and he was here for a fight. Yeah, I don't know. I think Robbie Lawler three years ago would have fucked his goddamn shit up. Maybe. Maybe, but you don't know. I know. know. It's, well, it's the, all MMA fantasy games the there. Fucked thing but I think, I think Robbie Lawler uh, deserves some love at 172 in a division that is really devoid of heroes these days. You know? There's none because yeah. Tyron Woodley pulls the hero. Kamar Usman might be our new one. Oh, let's hope. We'll talk about so that next week. Next week. All right. Hey, uh, I want you all, you fuckers, to have a good weekend. Um, and uh, thanks for like hanging out with us. That's yep. Thanks to Josh uh, Lacour. Thanks to uh, Daryl. Thanks to Low Down and all the friends that he has brought along. Thanks to LJ getting the word out. You bet. Oh, I said Low Down. Yeah. By the way, did you see Low Down's fucking doing music again? Yeah. Doing a show, Ruben's house. Can we talk about him now? Next week. All right, we're going to talk about it. Peace.